नमस्ते जय हिंद वंदे मातरम दिस इज कुणाल मेहता फ्रॉम मेक मी साइंटिफिक एंड वी आर गोइंग टू टेक अप वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट न्यूमेरिकल्स फ्रॉम द टॉपिक ऑफ प्रिंसिपल ऑफ मोमेंट्स सो वी नीड टू बेसिकली अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ मोमेंट्स एंड देन वी विल स्टार्ट सॉल्विंग द न्यूमेरिकल्स ओके सो हियर वी हैव अ बॉय एंड अ गर्ल राइट और टू चाइल्ड पी एंड क्यू हु आर सिटिंग एट टू एंड ऑफ द सी सो करेक्ट सो लेट मी कॉल दिस एज एंड ए and this as and b right now yeah so now this is the point of pivot or this is the fulcrum you may say right and this entire seesaw is going to perform the motion in this way right now this is actually a very very small part of the entire rotational motion if you see something like this this is a very small section of a body that is completely rotating so whenever there is a concept of rotation the clockwise torque or the anti clockwise torque or you may call uh, moments are going to come into the picture so first of all moments are or moment of force moment of force or you may call as torque that is equal to force and the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation it's a product of the force and the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation and si unit would be newton into meter please do not write this as joule because joule would be the si unit of energy even though we do understand the fact that newton into meter is joule but please do not write down joule over here because this torque is a kind of it plays a role of force in the rotational motion like the force plays role in the linear motion exactly the same thing the torque does in the rotational motion so torque actually represents a force it does not represent energy so you can't write the si unit of the torque as newton into meter as joule correct so simply write uh, that as newton into meter or you can also write any of the units which are given in the question right so now if you look carefully if this boy child p gets down then the entire plank is going to become like this and why is that because of the girl's weight in this direction right and the entire rotation actually happens with respect to this dotted line which is known as axis of rotation and this perpendicular distance which i have mentioned over here is the distance between this axis of rotation so i am going to pull out this axis of rotation like this this is the axis of rotation and we have to extend the direction of the force or the direction in which the force is acting in this case it is weight so this is the perpendicular distance which i am talking about over here so basically in short you need to say that the torque the torque or the moment of force due to child q that is equal to weight of child b i should write down wb times the perpendicular distance from the axis of pivot for child b right that i have already shown you over here right let me use us another pen size right now you can very well see that this entire plank is moving in which direction in the clockwise direction had it been no child p then due to the weight of the child q the entire plank would be moving in a clockwise direction would be rotating in a clockwise direction so this is a clockwise torque so i should be better writing here as the clockwise torque so this is in the same way now if we imagine that this child q gets down or if this girl gets down then what is going to happen the entire plank is going to bend in this particular direction due to the weight of the child q like this due to the weight of the child p so the weight is acting always in the downward direction this is p so due to the weight the entire this plank is going to turn in an anti clockwise direction now this since there is a turning effect so the torque or the moment of force is going to come up into the picture so the torque due to child p that is equal to force that is the weight of the child p times the perpendicular distance so this is the axis of rotation again that is passing through the pivot point 
axis of rotation will always pass through the point where we have the fulcrum or the point which does not move at all. So, like if this is the plank and if this is moving, so you can see that this point does not move at all. So, the axis of rotation passes from there. And this would be the perpendicular distance between the force that is the weight as well as the axis of rotation, right? So, like this one. So, this is the perpendicular distance like this one. And it may happen that these two perpendicular distances may be different and these two may, weights may be different. But just imagine now what is going to happen if the, this is anti-clockwise, I should write it down over here. If this clockwise torque and the anti-clockwise torque, if they become equal, then this plank is going to remain in rotational equilibrium. It is not going to bend in this direction. It is not going to bend in that direction. Correct? So, now just imagine that in this particular case, in this case of this plank, if I clamp it exactly at the middle, I mean if I put a fulcrum exactly at the middle. So, if a person is sitting nearby this axis of rotation, and the person is heavy, his weight is a bit larger and the distance is smaller. So, in order to balance the torque, the, this anti-clockwise torque because the weight of this person is going to move the entire plank in the anti-clockwise direction. So, the anti-clockwise torque has to be balanced with a clockwise torque for that if there is a light weighted person then he ha he will have to sit comparatively at a larger distance because the product has to be balanced so if the weight is less then this distance needs to be larger so by keeping these small things in our in your mind we should go ahead with the numericals now and always remember that this moment of force is a vector quantity right let's move on and solve question number 1 Right. All right. The perpendicular distance between the point of application of force and the turning point is this. So, you may consider a very simple example of a spanner and this is a nut bolt say for example and you are exerting a force like this. And the point of application of force, so suppose we are exerting force in this direction. So, this is the point of application of uh, the force that is P and the turning point. Turning at what is turning? The bolt is turning. And the center point of the bolt is the point which does not move at all. So, the axis of rotation would be passing through it and it would be coming out of the plane of the paper right, or the plane of the laptop. So, this is the axis of rotation passing through um, this particular point and the perpendicular distance would be this distance. The perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation as well as the line of action of force which passes through the force right so we are supposed to easily find out so the torque is equal to force times the perpendicular distance we are given the distance that is 1.75 meters and a force of 80 newton x on it so when you multiply 80 newtons with 1.75 meter you will get your answer as 140 newton times meter again i am saying please don't write this as joule correct and if you exert the force in this direction, then the entire bolt is going to move in anti-clockwise direction. So, basically this is an anti-clockwise torque, right? But we don't have to worry about the direction over here because this is the single torque acting. Let's move on to problem number 2. We are given force that is 50 Newton and the moment of force that is the torque is given to us as 10 Newton meter. By the way, torque is written by tau. This is a Greek letter T A U tau, right? but you may simply choose to write down T also, that is all right, that is ok. Right? So, the torque is equal to force times the perpendicular distance like this one. So, we are being given, we will have to check everything is in SI unit or not. So, 10 Newton times meter that is equal to force that is 50 Newton times the perpendicular distance. So, simply if you calculate this is 10 by 5, so that is 0. Point meters that is the perpendicular distance that is the answer to the problem. We are starting with a very simple numericals then the complexity will increase right. So, a couple of now what do you mean by couple? See in couple suppose this is a steering wheel right. 
this is the car steering wheel and you are exerting force at two diametrically opposite points suppose if i am driving a car i would be turning the steering wheel like this or like this that means the direction of the forces are exactly opposite right so here force f here force f down by the way if the word couple that means pair of equal and opposite forces so both the forces are equal 15 newton 15 newton and the arm of the couple that is the di diameter or the distance between arm of the couple means the distance between two parallel or anti parallel forces so the perpendicular distance between both the parallel or the anti parallel forces is the arm of the couple that is given here as 85 centimeters okay so the moment of couple moment of couple is equal to any one of the force times the perpendicular distance between both the forces which is here as 85 centimeters so i will need to convert that into meters correct otherwise you can simply choose to write the answer in newton into centimeter but in the question it is specifically asked to write the answer in si system that's why we need to uh, convert everything into si unit so the force is given to you as 50 newton so if you multiply this and divide it by 100 you will get your answer as 12.75 newton times meter what is the another way of doing this problem you can find out where the axis of rotation of the steering wheel is that is exactly at the center because the entire part the out of the entire wheel the center part of the wheel is the part which is not rotating at all right so the axis of rotation passes now you you will have to find out both the torques because now there are two torques and both the torques are in same direction they are in clockwise direction so find out the torque and add them so 85 divided by 2 would be the distance of axis of rotation from force to the axis of rotation so that is uh, how much 42.5 so 42.5 multiplied by 15 newton would be one torque similarly another torque and add them you will get the same answer but i think straight away you can remember the uh, formula for the couple that is any one of the force moment of couple is any one of the force times the distance between both the forces two forces each of magnitude 2 newton vertically upward and downward so again this is a case of couple two ends of a uniform rod of length 1 meter so which means that we have a rod like this and it is a 1 meter rod which makes the length as 100 centimeter now both the ends this is let me call this as end a let me call this as end b we are exerting the forces in the opposite direction so the entire scale is or the entire scale is going to turn in one particular direction here it would be moving in anti-clockwise manner so if i exert a force here and here then but in opposite direction then this is going to turn like this one had it been to same direction forces then it would not turn correct so moment of force is very simple to find out over here moment of force is any one of the force times the distance between two forces perpendicular distance so the perpendicular distance between both the forces is 100 centimeter and any one of the force is 2 so 2 newton into 100 centimeter that is equal to 2 newton into 1 meter that is equal to 2 newton meter that is the answer diagram alongside shows a force of 5 newton and that produces a moment of 6 newton meter so we are being given that force times the perpendicular distance which is equal to the torque and the force value is given to u as 5 newton perpendicular distance is not given that is equal to the torque that is 6 newton times meter but here the distance between the axis of rotation the axis of rotation would be passing through point o and the force is being applied at point a so the perpendicular distance would be oa that is the perpendicular distance right so i would be basically getting oa the radius and the double of that is asked as diameter so the perpendicular distance which is oa that is equal to 6 by 5 newton newton would get cancelled 
so answer would be in meter 5 ones are 5 then 5 twelves are 60 so 1.2 meter so that this is distance OA which is the radius so the diameter would be double of this one so that is 2.4 meter which is the answer so let's move on to problem number five a uniform meter scale that means the length is one meter so if this is zero centimeter mark then this has to be 100 centimeter mark okay and then the center point that is at 50 centimeter mark over there the weight of the entire scale is concentrated so i'm just going to write w now the 5 gf and 40 gf gram forces are at 10 centimeters so at 10 centimeter mark you have 5 gram force 5 gram force and at uh, 80 centimeter mark that is somewhere over here we have 40 gram force so this is 40 gram force all right mm -hmm. now the scale is pivoted at 60 centimeter mark so somewhere over here we have 60 centimeters over there there is a knife edge or you may put a very simple fulcrum correct now first thing is the scale is in balanced position that means the entire clockwise moment is equal to anti-clockwise moment so i should be writing according to principle of moments is equal to anti clockwise moment if you are solving the numerical these two steps are compulsory to write you may lose on your marks if you don't write these two okay now let's understand which of these moments are clockwise and which of these moments are anti clockwise okay so assume that this weight as well as 5 gram force are not there under that situation this 40 gram force will will tilt the entire scale somewhere in this direction so due to the weight of this 40 gram force the entire scale is going to turn in this direction like this so this is the clockwise moment okay now in the same way if we assume that the 40 gram force does not exist under that situation the entire scale will tip over in this direction okay so this would be the 5 gram force as well as the w would be tilting the entire system in the anti-clockwise manner so now we know that which of the torques are in clockwise direction and which of them are in the anti-clockwise direction so right so clockwise moment or clockwise torque that is equal to force into perpendicular distance so that is 40 gf multiplied by the perpendicular distance is always from the pivoted point to where the force is so which makes this distance as the perpendicular distance so 60 to 80 that is 20 centimeters you did not to convert everything into si unit anyhow both the uh, the torques have similar units they are going to get cancelled so please do not worry about the units and then you have five gram force and the five gram force is at a distance of 60 sorry 50 centimeters from the pivot point remember all distances are to be measured from pivot or the fulcrum so times 50 centimeter plus weight of the scale which is unknown times the distance from the pivot that is 10 centimeters correct now solving this is 800 gram force centimeter that is 250 gram force centimeter plus 10 w times centimeter so now 800 minus 250 that is 550 gram force times centimeter that is equal to 10 times w into centimeter centimeter getting cancelled zero zero getting cancelled so the weight of the scale is equal to 55 gram force which is the answer to the problem in the similar way we are going to attempt all the next questions also so uniform meter scale again this is zero centimeter mark this is 100 centimeter mark 
and the weight of the scale is exactly at, at the center that is w 50 centimeter mark okay now they are saying that the scale is balanced it is not necessary that always the scale is balanced at its center okay the scale is balanced at 20 centimeter mark so like this and now you are supposed to hang 100 gram force on one of the ends so if i call this as end a and if i call this as end b where should i attach the 100 gram force for the scale to be balanced the answer is a because already under the effect of weight the entire scale is going to tip in the clockwise direction if you don't hang the weight the entire scale is going to tip in the clockwise direction so for balancing the scale you need to put the weight or attach the weight 100 gram force on this side it's very simple to judge on one side of the fulcrum or the pivot you have one force then the other force has to be on the other side of the pivot so that means we now have made the diagram so now let's proceed further this would be tipping the entire scale in the clockwise direction whereas this would be tipping the scale in the anti-clockwise direction so again you should be writing according to principle of moments clockwise moment is equal to anti-clockwise moment or the torque please write down this in full i am writing this in short right so the clockwise moment that is equal to weight times weight times the perpendicular distance from the pivot point so that is 30 centimeters that is equal to 100 gram force times the distance from the pivot point so that is 20 centimeters so 0 0 centimeter centimeter getting cancelled so this is 200 gram force divided by 3 so this is somewhere around 77.7 gf that is the answer to the problem moving ahead again a uniform meter scale of weight now this time the weight of the scale is given which is at 50 centimeter mark the weight of the scale is given to us that is 50 gf but the scale is balanced at 40 centimeter mark so i am going to call this as 40 centimeter mark and then this is 0 centimeter mark and this is end b that is 100 centimeter mark and this is end a right now the weight 100 gf is placed at 5 centimeter mark so this is 5 centimeter mark and 100 gram force is attached here correct now where must be a weight of 80 gram force suspended to balance the meter scale correct now if you analyze carefully in this particular problem let's without find let's find out the clockwise and anti clockwise torque before attaching the weight we are not attaching the weight as of now we'll just find out the cal the clockwise and the anti clockwise moment suppose anti clockwise moment is larger than the clockwise moment so we need to increase the clockwise moment by adding a weight on that side of the scale correct so first of all anti clockwise torque and the anti clockwise torque would be see this 100 gram force would be tipping the scale in the downward direction due to which the scale would be tipping like this so this is anti clockwise correct So that means anti clockwise torque is equal to 100 gf times its distance perpendicular distance from the pivot point so 5 and 40 so that gap is 35 centimeters so which makes this as 35 100 gram force times centimeter now if i find the clockwise torque that is equal to suppose if i remove this weight then the 50 gram force would be tipping the entire scale in this direction so this is the clockwise direction right so that is 50 gram force times the distance from the pivot that is 10 centimeters and it is clearly visible that this is 500 gram force times centimeter so i need to increase 
the clockwise moment and that I can only do by adding the weight on this side. Correct? So, this is 80 gram force that I am attaching at say y centimeter mark. I don't know where I am attaching it. But the distance from here to here I am going to call this as x. Right? So, now the clock according to the principle of moments clockwise moment or the clockwise torque is equal to anti-clockwise torque. So, the clockwise torque is already 500 gf times centimeter plus now after adding the weight it is 80 gram force times the distance from pivot and the distance from pivot or 40 centimeter mark is x. So, that is equal to the anti-clockwise moment which is already 3500 gf times centimeter. So, 80 gram force times x that is equal to 3500 minus that 500. So, that is 3000 gram force times centimeter. Gram force, gram force getting cancelled. 110 getting cancelled. Now, 4 2 za, 4 7 za 28 and 4 5 za. Then again dividing this. So, this I am getting answer x as 37. 0.5 centimeters. Now, please understand this. This is the distance from the pivot point. So, if this is your pivot point, that is 40 centimeter mark. From here, 37.5 centimeters, which makes my y point as 77.5 centimeter. We have obtained the distance, but you have to add that distance into 40 centimeter in order to get the measurement of the scale. That is the answer to the problem. So, now let us discuss problem number 8. In this problem number 8, we have two children whose weights are given 30 kgf and 40 kgf and they are sitting on a same side of the fulcrum of this 8 meter long seesaw. So, if I call this as an end as A, which is 0 meter, this end as B, which is 8 meter and it is exactly balanced at the center which is 4 meter mark, right? Now, both the children are sitting on the same side of the fulcrum. Now, please note that this boy is closer to the fulcrum at a distance of 1.5 meter has weight 30 kgf. How? Because this 30 kgf resembles this distance. 30 kgf 1.5 and 40 kgf 3.5. So, this has weight 40 kgf and he is at a distance of 3.5 meter away. You can clearly see that both of their weight is contributing to the anti-clockwise moment. So, they would be turning the entire seesaw in this direction. So, now an, another lady should be sitting on this side to produce some clockwise moment and the weight of this is 60 kgf. Then and only then the clockwise moment would be created and it would be able to balance the anti-clockwise moment. Say, for example, this distance is x. So, now as per the principle of moments, anti-clockwise moment is equal to clockwise moment. So, anti-clockwise moment is equal to 40 kgf times 3.5, the distance from the pivot, plus again 30 kgf times 1.5, that is equal to 60 kgf times x. So, this is equal to 45. Now, this is equal to 35 times 4, so that is 140, that is equal to 60 times of x. So, 60x is equal to 185, so x is equal to 185 divided by 60 and this answer is roughly 3.08 meters. So, the lady should be sitting at a distance of approximately 3.08 meters from the fulcrum, that is the answer. So, basically, at what mark then you will have to add 4 plus that means this this point is 7.08 meters away from end a in this way also you can write it out let's move ahead question number 9 a physical balance generally a physical balance is known as taraju right in hindi and it has two pans now usually it is pivoted at the middle but here the question says something else 
here one arm is longer that means i should be saying that these two are the pans of the physical balance or the beam balance physical balance is a very small version of the beam balance right beam balance is larger now ideally it is to be pivoted at the middle but here they are saying that something like this this arm is 60 centimeters long and the another arm is 40 centimeter long correct now what weight kept on the pan of longer arm so we don't know the weight to be kept over here so the weight is w and the weight is kept 100 gram force ignoring the weight of these pans over here correct so now this would be producing which moment anti-clockwise moment this 100 gram force would be producing clockwise moment so as per the principle of moments anti-clockwise moment is equal to clockwise moment so anti-clockwise moment is equal to w times the distance from the pivot so pivot or the axis of rotation is here so 60 centimeters so w times 60 centimeter is equal to 100 gf times 40 centimeter so centimeter getting striked off from both the ends so w is equal to 4000 gf divided by 60 so this is somewhere around 6 ones are 6 6 are 36 again 4 6 6 are 36 so this answer is roughly 66.6 .6 gram force which is the answer to the problem okay let's move ahead a very good question over here now if you look carefully the diagram states that there is a beam or a wooden plank which is attached with a rope and the person is walking so this person has his own weight w and then this is the hinge point that means this is pivoted point correct and then the tension in the rope will be in the upward direction now if you look carefully the weight would be turning this entire beam in clockwise direction whereas the torque would be turning in the anti-clockwise direction okay now the question says that the beam is three meter long so that means the tension force is applied at a distance of three meter from the hinge right the weight of the man is 800 newtons and he walks from p to q what is the distance of the man from point p when the tension e is 500 newton so you can very well uh, understand that if this person starts moving towards the rope then the tension in the rope has to increase correct in order to balance the moment so as of now if we write it down that this is 500 newton the anti-clockwise moment as per the principle of moments is equal to clockwise moment so anti-clockwise moment is equal to tension times the distance from the hinge that is 3 meters that is equal to the weight of the person w we know that is 800 newtons times the distance now this distance d is variable the distance of the man from the hinge correct now you can very well see that if this d increases this is constant this is constant so the t has to go up correct so t is 500 newton in this case 3 meter that is equal to 800 newton and the distance is d that we need to find it out correct so distance d is equal to 500 into 3 divided by 800 newton newton gets cancelled so 220 is getting cancelled so this is 15 divided by 8 meters so this is roughly 1.8 1 8 8 to 1 8 8 7 so 8 8 64 so approximately 1.8 meter which is the answer to the problem or 15 by 8 is also correct right let's move ahead uniform half meter scale that means the length is 50 centimeters half meter scale is balanced at 20 9 so the weight of the scale is at its geometrical center which is 25 centimeter and 29 centimeter would be somewhere over here over there the scale is balanced pivoted now the mass of 20 grams is hung at one end 
in order to balance the scale now you should understand this very clearly that if you don't attach any weight this weight of the scale is going to turn the entire scale in the anti clockwise direction so if there are two ends a and b you are supposed to attach the weight 20 gram force here 20 gram weight mass means 20 gram force weight otherwise if you put the weight on the other side then already the anti clockwise moment is so strong and you are adding the weight to create even more anti clockwise torque to balance the torque we need to create a clockwise torque that can be only done if you plug in the weight at on the other side of the fulcrum now this distance is 21 centimeters distance from the pivot here this gap is 4 centimeters so according to the principle of moments anti clockwise moment is equal to clockwise moment so w into 4 centimeter is equal to 20 gram force into 21 centimeters so weight of the scale is equal to 20 into 21 divided by 4 centimeter centimeter getting cancelled 4 ones are 4 fives are answer is 105 gram force now we have solved a and b part in which direction would the balancing point shift if 20 gram mass is shifted inside now see if you bring this weight in this direction which will clearly indicate that this distance is going to decrease which means the clockwise moment entirely is going to decrease correct in that situation the entire scale would be tipping in the anti clockwise direction so to balance the scale you cannot change w now since the clockwise torque is decreasing you need to decrease the anti clockwise torque as well for that you can't change w which means you will have to decrease this gap of 4 centimeters that can be only done if you shift this fulcrum towards the weight of the scale or towards 25 centimeter mark that is the answer to the problem so now let's solve the last part that is a uniform meter scale which is pivoted at 0 centimeter mark so this is end a this is 0 centimeter mark and this is the pivot point right and then this is 100 centimeter mark and the weight of the scale which is exactly at 50 centimeter mark at its geometrical center is given to you as 10 gram force so even if you don't do anything the entire scale is going to tip over under its own weight like this if you don't hold the scale it is going to fall down like this turn and this is the clockwise moment right so the weight of the scale is going to provide a clockwise moment that is equal to force that is the weight 10 gram force times the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation or the pivot point so this distance is 50 centimeter so 50 centimeter so that is 500 gram force times centimeter that is the answer to the first part what moment depresses the rule which means what moment is going to turn the entire meter scale in the clockwise direction now how it can be made horizontal by applying least force so you got to apply a force in the upward direction you need to hold it for holding you need to apply force in the upward direction say at a distance x from the pivot so already there is a clockwise moment and to produce anti-clockwise moment this force would be turning the entire scale in the upward direction so anti-clockwise direction so anti-clockwise moment that is equal to some force f multiplied by the distance from the pivot that is x so if these two torques are equal the scale is going to be in equilibrium so as per, as per the principle of moments torque or the moment now 500 gram force times centimeter that is equal to f times x now see in the question they have asked least force so the product has to be equal to 500 so if this x is maximum then and only then this f would be minimum and the maximum value of x that you can take is 100 centimeters so if i apply the force here say f then i will have to apply the least force it is just that the handle of the door is always at a very large distance away from the hinges the axis of rotation so we apply with a very little bit amount of effort in the same way here also 500 gram force times centimeter 
P is equal to F that we need to find out. This is maximum that is 100 centimeter gets cancelled. Two zeros, two zeros get cancelled. So the minimum force that you are applying is 5 gram force. That is the answer to the problem. So I hope that now these numericals will help you out. If you have any doubts, please do comment in the comment section. Right. And always practice this numerical to gain the better understanding. Thank you for watching the video.